All right, I would like to start out our sermon study uh, this weekend with a quote. And I'm going to ask you if anybody is so bold to give me a guess on who is saying this quote. Remember back two weeks ago, I gave you a top 10, actually it was a top 20 list of the smartest people to ever live as per uh, the toplist.com. In there was Solomon at 15. In there was our Lord Jesus Christ and his holiness at 12. And I'll give you a clue as to who said this. This man, it's a man, is number four on that list. If you want to throw out a guess after I read it, uh, I'd be happy to hear it. I won't embarrass you. But here is, the te- here is his quote. I reached the pinnacle of success in the business world. In others' eyes, my life was an epitome of success. However, aside from my work, I had little joy. In the end, wealth is, the only, is only a fact of life that I am accustomed to. At this moment, lying on, this, on the sickbed and recalling my whole life, I realize that all the recognition and wealth that I took so much pride in have paled and become meaningless in the face of impending death. In the darkness, I look at the green lights from the life support machines and hear the humming mechanical sounds. I can feel the breath of God of death drawing near, drawing closer. Nonstop pursuing of wealth will only turn a person into a twisted being just like me. The wealth I have won in my life, I cannot bring with me. Any guesses who that might be? that said that. The number four ranked smartest person that ever lived. Of course, that of course is uh, number fourth ranked, and of course our Lord Jesus uh, was 12, so take this with a grain of salt. But the number four, any ideas? No? Sorry? Exactly. Steve Jobs. An interviewer went to his deathbed where he said uh, he is at this moment and asked him, how he looked back on his life. And these were his words. Steve Jobs, if you have a Apple phone, it was because of Steve Jobs. If you have an Apple computer, it's because of Steve Jobs. If you have a small phone, even if it's not an Apple, you can thank Steve Jobs, amongst other things that he invested in, amongst other things that he did. He was a billionaire, he did so many things, accomplished so many dreams, and yet, You look back and you realize he is saying a lot of the things that Solomon said. He said that, you know what, it is meaningless. All the work he did was meaningless in the face of impending death. Looking back, all this work, all the things that he did made him into, what did he say? A twisted being. You know, I wouldn't have have looked down on you if you would have guessed that this indeed was Solomon. Because Solomon, like we saw last week, had accomplished many things. Solomon was one that built temples, and he built um, courthouses, and he built uh, orchards, and he built many things. He accomplished many things. Solomon also earned a lot of money, not just by taxes, but by investing in things. So Solomon not only put things and did things, but Solomon also became very, very rich. And That's what we need to hear this weekend, because we're going to talk about work. And here in America, work is tied to us. One of the things that make us into a good person is that they are known as a hard worker. We live in a world where we have tied ourselves, our value, usually to our jobs. Remember when these were invented by Steve Jobs. These were invented with the idea that Once we have all this technology, we'll be able to do so much more. And since we can do so much more, we can now go down to a four-day week, a four-day work week. Just think of how ridiculous that sounds. Imagine going to your job next week, and all they expect from you is a four-day work week. Nowadays, we're at a five-day work week at a minimum. We could, many people, work on Saturdays six days a week. And if you're not, there sure is a temptation for you to work six days a week now because you can get so much more done. Because of that, we live in a world where we are tied to work, we are tied to things that we do, we are tied to our careers, 
And like we know about Satan, that's where he likes to sit. Satan loves to put up his deer stand, his Dan stand, his you stand to win you back on the places where you are weak or where your attention is. And so he'll give you things like, you know what? It's good that you're working. You need to work more and harder and harder until you finally find yourself burning out. And because you burn out, you lose value of yourself. You lose passion in life. And with that, you go down a spiral. He'll, be, he'll say things like, you know what? You are so vital. You are so vital that even if you left your job, that they could not live without you. And then when you find out that the job can live without you, your, your, your employer can go on without you, here comes the depression. You know what? I wasn't as important as I thought I was. You know what? I didn't make a difference in life like I wanted to. And how many times have you met someone that after they've retired, they look back on their life and they say, all those years, my prime years were spent working. My prime time was not spent with my family. It wasn't spent at church. It wasn't spent with my wife or husband. It wasn't spent doing things I wanted to do. I was tied to my work, and all my prime years are now behind me. And Satan loves that. He would love us to have the wrong idea of work. And so it's great that we listen to Steve Jobs, and that's a great quote, but we need to listen to our Lord because he's the one that invented work, and he is the one that can show us how to have a healthy blend and healthy balance when it comes to work. So with that, let's turn our attention now to Ecclesiastes. I'm going to go get our stool here. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And this is what Solomon said about work. This is what he had to say looking back on his life. Because remember, he has accomplished many things in his life. He has done many things. He has built many things. He has become very, very rich. Looking back now, he has things to teach us because the one thing about Solomon is that he is wise. He was given wisdom beyond understanding that we can even fathom. And with that, the Lord gave him wisdom now to teach us. So here is old man Solomon, gray-haired Solomon, guide Solomon to teach us and have a healthy understanding when it comes to work. This is what he writes to us about work. Looking back, the, our guide Solomon says, I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is meaningless. All the work, he says, that I did, meaningless, chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. So the first thing he realizes is I'm working and there's going to be a day when someone's going to take my job. Even Solomon realized that someday someone else is going to be king. Someone else is going to be judge. Someone else is going to be the architect. Someone else is going to have all my wealth. I can't take it with me, Steve Jobs would say. And Solomon would agree. And who knows, verse 19, who knows um, whether he will be a wise man or a fool. I, I don't know who's going to be the next person. I'm going to be gone. Yet, he will have control over all the work into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. Like we have been learning from Solomon, without God, work is meaningless. Without God, accomplishments are meaningless. Without God, you are working for the man and then you start to burn out and you start to have all these problems and depression because all of our adjustments are wrong. We're working hard, Solomon would say, but, but for what? What's the point? What's the meaning without God in the picture? Verse 20. So my heart began to despair over my toilsome labor under the sun. You know, it, it, it's great. Solomon even says, you know, I'm realizing I'm doing this for nothing. Uh, who cares if I built a temple? Really, who cares if I built a, a judge's seat? Who cares if I built a living quarters better than anything in the world? At the end of the day, as I'm dying, who cares? For a man may, may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then he must leave all he owns to someone who has not worked for it. This, too, is meaningless and a great misfortune. What does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labors under the sun? All his days, his work is pain and grief, even at night, his mind does not rest. This, too, is meaningless. 
A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. He's telling us, without God, all I do is I get up and I work and someday I'll give it to someone else. And then I go home and I eat and I try to find enjoyment and I just repeat. This is how Solomon says, I'm finding my life and it is meaningless. And Steve Jobs would say, Amen. It is all meaningless. As I'm looking at those green lights trying to keep me alive, I'm realizing I can't take it with me. It is all for nothing. Okay? So what's the answer? Solomon tells us what the answer is. This, too, I see work he's talking about. Work is from the hand of God. There's his aha moment. God is the one that invented work. God is the one that gave us things to do. God didn't give us things to do because of sin. He gave us things to do even before Adam and Eve fell into sin. So he likes it, and we can worship him by working. So he realizes work is from the hand of God, for without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases God, he gives him wisdom and knowledge and, and happiness. So when we work realizing that God gave it to us, when we work realizing that there are ways that God wants us to work, he says that there, there is actually blessings waiting for us along that path. When we go in there with clear eyes, realizing what work is, there are real blessings waiting for us. But to the sinner, he gives a task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless a chasing after the wind. Okay, let's transition this to us today. What does God, what does Solomon, what does God through Solomon want us to know in 2021? What does he want you to carry for many of us when we go back to our jobs tomorrow or next week or, or whenever that would be? First off, like Solomon said, work is not bad, right? Work is a blessing from God. Mismanagement of work is bad. Just like alcohol isn't bad. Mismanagement of alcohol is bad. Just like drugs are not bad. Taking them in wrong doses, taking them illegally is bad. Anger is not bad. Having it be who defines you and having it be so that you can bully people and, and uh, make people uh, feel low and not lead out of love, that's, that's bad. So work in itself is not bad. But if we find ourselves mismanaging it and mismanaging our life, then it is bad. How do we do that? Well, let's find out. If you ever tell yourself, you know what? I was put on this earth. I was put on this earth to be a teacher. I was put on this earth to be a doctor. I was put on this earth to be a pastor. Well, you've mismanaged work. I was not put on this earth to be a pastor. I was not put on this earth to be a doctor. I was not put on this earth to be a banker. I was not put on this earth to be a teacher. I was put on this earth to reflect God. I was put on this earth to raise the children that he would have me raise. I was put on this earth to be the best kind of husband I can be to my wife. And I was put on this earth to serve the Lord the best way I can. If I'm defining myself by the way I work and who I am at work, I'm mismanaging work and I'm mismanaging the blessing that he has given to us. Another way that you can find out, imagine you go home tonight, imagine for you watching right now, you get a phone call and on it you are being fired. Imagine losing your job on Monday. Are you going to feel like you are worthless? Are you going to feel like you have no, no uh, reason to live? Are you going to feel like you have nothing to offer this world? If you do, then you have mismanaged God's blessing of work. If you put and tie yourself and your value to your career, you've mismanaged work. If you have put everything into your work, well, let's hear what Jesus would say. Our Lord Jesus would tell us this. If you have put everything into your work, if you put your security into your work, if you put your happiness into your work, if you put your, um, who you are and your being into your work, our Lord Jesus would tell you this. You're a fool. You fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Jesus is reminding us is there's something bigger that we have to look forward to. And it's not the next raise. It is not the next promotion. 
It is the fact that we're going to have a face-to-face interview with our Lord someday. And like Steve Jobs tells us, you can't take your money with you. You can't take your trophies with you. You can't take your promotions with you. What you can do is carry that faith, the most important thing that you have, with you. See, Jesus would know something about work. He came down to this world for one reason. It wasn't to do miracles. It wasn't to say clever sayings that we write and put on our walls. It wasn't to heal people. It was to do one job and one job only, and that was to do the Father's will and save you. That was his job. He did not put value in how many disciples he had. He did not put his value on how many people followed him. He did not put his value in hardships or the lack of hardships. He put his value in following what the Lord asked him to do, going to the cross, dying for you so that he could save you, so that he could spend eternity with you. That was his job. That was his focus. That is what he came to do. And so with that, knowing that, that now gives us power. And that gives us an opportunity now to probably adjust our thinking when it comes to work. So with that, let's, let's answer the question. If you are interested in finding true, true joy in your work, here's the answer. If you want to find joy, if you want to find happiness in your work, here's the answer. The first thing is to recognize what it is. Your work is not who you are. Your work is simply God's invention for you to use the skills he has given you to do and worship him in in help society. That's what work is. With that, God will promise to bless you through that, through paychecks, so that you can support your family, so that you can support your church, so that you can help people, so that you can use the gift of money through work, through your things that you're able to do, use those things to honor God and worship him that way. So with that, you can put it into place. Work is another blessing. But I can tell you, and God would say, your family is more important than your work. Your children are more important than your work. Your Lord is more important than all of them. And so if you're finding your work taking away from your family time, from your kids' time, from your husband-wife time, from your God time, from your personal time, then you have mismanaged it. Here's a way for you to think about it. You can leave here knowing that I love coffee and I absolutely think coffee is disgusting. And here's the situa- Here's how the difference is. If you were to give me a cup of black coffee with nothing in it, disgusting. I, I probably wouldn't drink it, it is because black coffee is disgusting. But if you were to add to it, if you were to add creamer, if you were to add sugar, well then it's delightful. I'll drink as many cups as you want to give to me, right? And that's the way we look at work. If our whole focus is work, it's like black coffee and it's off and it's bad and it's bitter. But if we blend it, if we add to our, add to our work and make sure that we have time for our family, if we make sure we have time for our spouse, if we make sure that we have time for you and make sure that you spend time on yourself. If you make sure that you spend and, and find time and make time for God, then it's a blessing. Then you have blended it well and work is the blessing that God would have you. And then maybe you can look at work a different way. You can look at work and say, you know what? Not only can I use my abilities for my job, but I can use my abilities here at Hope. I can do things for my Lord. I can sign up for something, use my talents, and let her rip and do something amazing for the ministry and let God use me at work here at Hope. Or you can look at your job on this week and say, you know what? What if God put me in this place for a reason? What if this is my personal mission field? What if this is the place that God says, I want you to sit next to this person because this person doesn't know me, but you know me. You know what I've done for you. And it's your now opportunity to let God reflect off of us into their lives, possibly change their lives, possibly change their eternities. These are things now that we can find out this week. How can God use us and use the blessing of work for us 
and also for our Lord. Amen.